Your words, what ultimately matters is not the timing of liftoff on policy rates, but the cumulative response. John, can you build on that for us? Yeah, I mean, we all focus on uh, when exactly the liftoff is going to happen. And as you mentioned, like some are being brought uh, pretty aggressively into 2022 now. I would push back on, uh, you know, three hikes in 2022 seems like extremely aggressive to us. Um, but we might see uh, the beginning of the hiking cycle in 2022. But ultimately, uh, what's going to matter, uh, what is very un unusual in this cycle, is that the cumulative response to this kind of uh, inflation uh, that we haven't seen in 30 years uh, will be much more muted than historically. And that's going to be uh, meaning that real rates, uh, in our view, are, are, uh, are remain very low uh, for a sustained amount of time. And that's a, that's a different rate true to risk asset. I think that's a much more constructive backdrop that's sustained. And, um, and that's where there is a risk of confusion, uh, we think. So hashtag confusion that for us is a, is a starting point of conversation. What does the fiscal impulse of this natural disaster, this pandemic, what does it do to the geometry that any given central bank faces? It's not in the textbooks, is it? It's not in the textbooks. Uh, and, uh, you know, we call this whole kind of complex, well, we've talked about a policy revolution over the last uh, few years, this this complex of uh, both monetary policy and fiscal policy moving very aggressively. But that leaves us at a place now where, um, you know, we, we kind of forget about this, but uh, the debt levels are, are very high. Uh, not long ago, um, you know, the narrative in the U.S. was, um, you know, uh, the debt servicing costs are so low, uh, like at record levels uh, low, that we can afford to uh, increase the debt uh, very significantly, which we've done. Um, the flip side of this, which we'll see soon, is that um, it won't take much in terms of rate increase to change this story completely on its head. Um, you know, we can have the 10-year back at 2.5%, and at that point, uh, debt servicing costs in the U.S. will be back to their um, to their historical level, uh, throwing a completely out of the window. Uh, you know, the argument that Summers and Blanchard were making uh, just a, a couple of years ago. So, point being, to your point, uh, Tom, it's um, it's not textbook, and it's going to be a constraint on the equity rates that can go up. Jean, I find this fascinating, the idea here that central bankers and, frankly, policymakers in general don't want to see rates go up too high because the economy is no longer able to withstand it because of what you're just talking about. Does that mean that the more volatile asset class is perhaps short-term yields that have very little room to maneuver but could potentially be offset uh, dramatically by what my people might speculate about policy changes, whereas stocks continue to be supported no matter what by the negative real yields that you see persisting? Yeah, it's so, certainly consistent with what we've seen over the last uh, month uh, or two, uh, right? I mean, uh, lots of swings around the repricing of near-term policy, and yet uh, the backdrop has been, uh, you know, continues to be constructive uh, more broadly for risk assets. So I think that would be consistent with, uh, you know, uh, Rates might be lifting up at a different point in time, but there's a conviction that overall uh, this is going to be a muted the hiking cycle. Uh, and if it were not, I think we've seen some example of that, then markets are quick to price some kind of policy mistakes or quick reversals of policy, uh, which speaks to this environment we're talking about. It's going to be difficult to raise rates, or another way to put it is like any rate rise um, right. will have a, a bigger impact. Jean Bovin, I, I'm honored to do this with your work at Princeton. As you know, the great Olivier Blanchard of France, of MIT, and of the International Monetary Fund. Professor Blanchard is out with a blistering note this morning in the Peterson Institute saying, forget about Team Temporary, forget about Team Gloom. John mentions Dr. Alarian. He says we need to get used to the consequences of higher inflation. What are the consequences of a sustained higher inflation, as Olivier Blanchard mentions? Well, I mean, it feeds through uh, the entire economy. So, uh, you know, uh, there will be adjustment um, through, uh, you know, obviously prices, but that means also uh, we'll see some uh, wage dynamics, that uh, nominal wage dynamic that will be different. And uh, eventually, you know, um, workers will want to keep up with this inflation. Uh, it's going to change the bargaining kind of uh, situation, and uh, I think we'll see wages catching up. Um, we haven't seen, um, I think, I don't know, I haven't read yet uh, Olivier's piece, but uh, I would suspect, like, one of the key points is for the last 20 years where, you know, inflation was missing in action, and even if we are um, in a 2.5% world uh, going back, um, you know, after some, some spikes, it's going to feel different uh, for that reason. And the other big point is um, how will people 
people uh, react in terms of the expectation of inflation. And I don't think people, uh, we have collectively a good handle. There's no good models of inflation expectations. Uh, and so that's a big unknown, I guess, that um, we'll need to track and, and live with now.